and I wore my hair out. I did it one time, okay? One single time. That situation was actually really traumatizing. I just felt so incredibly misunderstood. Hello everyone, my name is Melody and I am coming at you live from... You already know. I have my orange on and that means today is a VIP kid video. I want to talk about today what it has been like for me personally to be a teacher of color, a woman of color working with VIP kid. I talked a lot about being black when I was living in Korea and what that looked like in the workplace and what that looked like just like in day-to-day -day life interacting with other people but I haven't really talked about what it has been like being a teacher of color working with VIP kid and I wanted to do that in this video and also kind of get a discussion starting on this topic because I'm only able to speak from my perspective and I'm sure other people have had different experiences and I want new teachers coming to the platform to have as much information as possible in terms of what it's like, what to expect. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into it. So before we get started, I am going to explain what VIP Kid is. If you are unfamiliar and if you're kind of just stumbling upon this video, VIP Kid is basically a company that's based out of Beijing, China, and you are essentially an online English teacher to children based out of China or Hong Kong. I have had students that live in both China and Hong Kong. This company, you basically are a contract teacher with them. Once you are hired on as a teacher, you then have a profile basically on their platform and students' parents can go online, see all of the teachers and book accordingly with you by seeing your availability as well as like you you have to have like a profile picture two extra pictures as well as a bio and a short introduction video so immediately parents can see what race you are what you look like how old you are and this is because again the profile i have found that personally i haven't really experienced any difficulty booking classes now, when I say that, I want everyone to also keep in mind that I started working with VIP Kid in 2017. Is it 17? Yes, 2017. So there was definitely not as many teachers on the platform. So that's something to keep in mind that my experience is varied because of that, the time that I came in. And once I generally got a student that scheduled a class with me, I tried to retain them the best that I could. And I did this by just being super engaging, leaving great feedback, and um, just trying to have the best 25 minute class I can with the student. And so for me, because of this being kind of the way that I'm operating, get them in and then once they're in, try to retain them. I found that anytime I opened a slot, I booked it. And so I didn't experience any sort of discrimination, any sort of um, like low bookings due to being a woman of color, due to being a person of color and um, that was just my experience. But I have to admit that because this is just my personal experience and I'm not working closely with other VIP kid teachers, I don't know if my experience would have been um, better or my bookings would have been easier to come by than they already were had I looked different. So I don't really have the ability to compare and contrast in that situation, but for me personally, that was what I experienced. Now, once I did get in the classroom, I was very conservative with how I wore my hair, and I still am. And to be honest, this just stems from my experience of living and teaching in South Korea. When I was in South Korea, there was just like zero understanding of natural hair, of my hair texture, of just so much surrounding my hair, and to keep any questions or to keep any confusion from happening. I do try to keep my hairstyles in the classroom conservative just from what I have experienced living abroad and dealing with um, people from other cultures that might not really understand my might not understand me to be honest so that is that on getting my bookings and what it's been like so far for me 
to you know retain students get new students and basically be on this platform now once i am in the classroom with this student i have found that nothing racial has ever come up and this is generally because the students are anywhere from 4 to 12 and they don't really have the vocabulary to ask me any questions that might stem some sort of conversation on race or they are so young and they are so impressionable that that prejudice that might be an adult per se that necessarily isn't you know, in their heart quite yet, which is a beautiful thing. And I don't wanna say quite yet because maybe we'll never be in their heart. The, the most that I've experienced once I was um, in a classroom was with a student who, who kept pointing at my skin. And basically he was a more advanced student and he was trying to explain to me that he has a friend that looks like me. And so, you know, he has a friend that has the same skin color as me. And I tried to ask them like, oh, like, is, are they, you know, African American? And basically they were just like a very tan Chinese person. That's kind of what I got from him. But that has really been um, the most that race has ever been brought up in a classroom. I think if I was teaching adults that this would definitely be different. I think one, adults would have more vocabulary to be able to communicate their ideas, their thoughts, and maybe some of their prejudices. And they wouldn't even be doing it to be mean, but it would just be, you know, a lack of understanding. And that's what I experienced in Korea a lot, just lack of understanding. And because I am wearing my hair very conservatively, that um, might also be a part of it. I know when I was living in Korea and teaching and I wore my hair out, I did it one time, okay? One single time because I was feeling it. My curls were popping. I get to school, I don't, I don't mean this sarcastically, literally every student I walked past in the hallway was laughing and giggling at me. They thought that I permed my hair, like not just permed it, but clearly like permed the S-H-I-T out of it to get it so curly because in their mind, my hair is black, so my hair texture must be the same as theirs, super straight. And for them to get curly hair, they have to perm it. And oh my gosh, for them to get this, they must have to like, you know, just uh, as soon as I got to school, my principal had asked me, oh, perm? And I'm just like, no, and I tried to explain to them in the best way that I could that this is my original hair. So they didn't really understand natural hair. They understand like original. So I would say this is my original hair. But anyways, that is a super long way of saying that because of my past experiences, I just, you know, play it cool, play it real conservative with my hair in the classroom because that situation was actually really traumatizing. Like it was really difficult because I just felt so incredibly misunderstood. But anyway, so that has been my experience being a teacher of color, a woman of color working with a VIP kid. A lot of my experiences are, you know, compared to when I was teaching and living in Korea. Um, I hope you guys kind of can understand where I'm coming from. If you are another, you know, teacher of color working on the platform or a woman of color working on the platform, please comment below, share your experiences of teaching on the platform. If you are interested in becoming a VIP kid teacher, my referral link is going to be the first link in the description box and i think that is everything i want to keep making um at least one vip kid video a month just because i think there's always something new to talk about so if you guys have any requests on my next vip kid video let me know also in the comments below and i will see you guys happy teaching bye